Welcome to our Rust EFI Buyer's Guide. Due to popular demand, I'm gonna explain in this video what the differences between the various Rust EFI models is and what is best for you because some people have been asking about this because the shop seems to be quite confusing, although it's actually not that hard. And you can find every detail of those ECUs in the wiki. And I'm gonna talk about that now. If you want to support us, you can become a channel member and help with our efforts of bringing tuning to the masses. To those who already do, I thank you a lot and appreciate what you do. As you can see here, um, first of all, in the store, we have quite a few options. So for example, we have the cheapest one, which I'm referencing in my videos most. We have the UAEFI Ultra Affordable a uh, EFI. Then a step above, we have the same thing, but with a metal casing. And then we have the Super UAE EFI, which has a few other options we are gonna talk about later. So above the UAE EFI ECU, there is only really one option that makes sense because the Proteus Large Universal ECU that you can see here, while is uh, more expensive than the UAE EFI and a little bit less expens expensive than the huge version, it is, let's say, a legacy device and is not recommended as its replacement. Basically, the Rust EFI Huge has uh, a lot more features for just a fraction of the cost more. And almost everything that you can do with the Proteus Large Universal ECU, you can do with the Super UAE EFI. Uh, so that has basically everything or most things the large one also does and if you need more so for example if you need to run a v12 sequentially and stuff uh, you will uh, use the rus efi huge the same thing goes for the micro rus efi it is not really the uh, latest and greatest anymore and for most people doesn't make sense to buy uh, just because it only has a few outputs and is very limited in functionality compared to the uh, UAFI. There isn't anything different like component wise and um, making these especially cheap. You may wonder, well, where does this cheap price then come from? It is actually by them not having to have a, a support or not being able, not being required to support anything or uh, to talk to people and solve their problems. It is community support only, and that's why these issues are so cheap. The UAEFI, for especially this one, uses relatively. Uh, low-cost Molex plugs, so the same kind you would find in a PC or like ATX uh, specification power supply. Um, it's very similar and those are really cheap. If you buy them in bulk and on websites, one of those plugs is gonna cost a few cents, but still does the job fine. And that's where the other ones come in. And this is where we are going to transition over to we also have some plug and play units uh, on offer or rather there are plug and play units on offer if you click here those are only a few so rust efi itself only offers a few rust efi plug and play options so for example the uh, gm e38 e honda obd1 a nissan uh, option mercedes Another Honda for K-Series, another for BMW and Volkswagen and uh, Audi Group. The reason why these are only lots of five is because, well, they are not in that great of a demand. And that's why they are uh, basically pre-order and you will have to order five because it doesn't really make sense to only uh, produce one of them. An option if you want one of those to buy it and he actually has a lot more plug and play options available would be Alpha X. He offers a lot more plug and play options. So he has the ones on uh, the screen you can see here. We have three pages of those and actually a few cool options for some people. I would think for example even like a Mini Cooper SR53 which I've not seen 
pretty, uh, that often. And then again, you can see on the screen, he has some other solutions for MX-5s, for example, those aren't as expensive um, and are price-wise on the same level as for example a ms3 but they have a lot more functionality and capability whereas for example on an ms3 you still need to uh, buy an additional uh, lambda or wideband controller so that costs about 200 euros extra uh, on a rust efi you only would need a sensor which can be had for about 80 euros so you are saving 120 euros there already back to Rust EFI itself and I want to have a look at the wiki because the wiki is where you can find out what the actual differences are. As I said here you have the uh, UAFI, the Rust EFI etc and the thing is that's what I was talking about the UAEFI and the Super UAEFI as, as well as the huge one, the huge Rust EFI, are the current lineup of ECUs. And the Proteus as well as the Micro Rust EFI are very old or relatively old. And while they do support a lot, it's not really the greatest option if you want the newest tech. And um, yeah, that's not really recommended to buy it. So I'm going to have a look at the Rust EFI ECUs that we have here. So starting with what the actual differences are. While well, the UA EFI and the UA EFI 121 are basically the same hardware wise, as you can see, the UA EFI 121 has a Bosch style or like that stock ECU style connector, which is handy if you want to make your setup look close to stock because, well, it just looks a little more standard and looks like a standard Bosch or uh, Magneti Marelli or whatever ECU. And um, it is actually a better connector because it actually is sealed. Although the unit itself is only sealed if you use a proper case or if you seal the case properly. It's still not suggested to put it in the engine bay or somewhere where it's wet. But um, yeah, it is better suited for uh, more harsh elements than the uh, standard UAEFI. Then going from the UAEFI to the Super UAEFI, well, there is one thing that's crucial or crucial for a, uh, some people because the Super UAEFI actually has a different uh, CPU on board or processor on board. It has an F7 processor, so that means you will have more resources for LUA coding if you want to do that, LUA scripting. Um, it's not really something I'm familiar with, but some people may want to do that. And that's basically the only feature plus the motorsport uh, uh, super seal connectors which are very common on other ECUs also you can see those here and <clears throat> that is basically it all of the UAAFI have six ignition outputs and eight injector outputs so you can drive a v8 basically with eight sequential uh, injectors and uh, on wasted spark ignition you could also drive a v12 if you paired both of those but then you would need to run uh, heat sinks on the drivers because it does get quite warm if all of them have uh, to drive two of each. Both have two DC motor drivers, so they can use electronic throttle bodies or even electronic wastegates or stepper idle valves. Although if you have a stepper idle, honestly, I would rather go for a uh, normal PWM idle because they are more common and you're not wasting a DC output that could be used for an electronic wastegate or electronic throttle body. Both of them have an onboard 4.2 LSU wideband controller. So that is basically all across the range for these ECUs, although the more expensive ones have uh, two. 
As for outputs, we have four low side outputs, so or, or rather six on the newer revision. So if you are buying one right now, you will have six outputs. Where they are located, you can find on the um, wiring diagram or interactive pinout. Low current, low side outputs, which is basically for uh, relays and stuff if you need that. Onboard SD card logging could be used if you need that. 11 or rather 9 plus 2 analog inputs. So that is for sensors and whatever else you want to put on there. Uh, flex fuel input that is kind of with the, um, the plus 2 of the 9 plus 2. And some things that you might be missing is would be the expandable stuff. For example, in comparison to a Speedwino or to most Speedwino units, this ECU is missing a map sensor integrated. So you could onboard solder on a MPX4250, which is pretty common. So that's a 2.5 bar um, total map sensor on MPXH6400. That is a four bar map sensor or three bar plus atmospheric. So that would be your option if you want to use a onboard map sensor, but there's plenty of options, also low priced ones to use a uh, external one. Also, you can solder on a Bluetooth module if you want to. So you have Bluetooth connectivity. In my opinion, I don't really like having Bluetooth. So it's, in my opinion, I like more having USB, but to each their own. EGT input is there. That is about it for the UAEFI. But what is even more fun is the Rust EFI huge because you have even more stuff you can do here. We have 12 injector channels, 12 coil outputs, so you can run a V12 fully sequentially for only 750 US dollars. That's something unheard of from, from any other ECU. We have four H bridges, so you could also use, um, as with the others, dual throttle bodies without a problem, but dual throttle bodies plus a stepper valve plus a external uh, electronic wastegate. Three VR sensor inputs, while the other issues have a dual VR conditioner, so you can use uh, two VR inputs. This one has three, so you could use a second cam position sensor, for example, and you have five hall sensor inputs. So while you could say, why do I need five RPM inputs? Well, that's actually pretty handy because you can use a input for well normal camshaft crankshaft so you could also put on vehicle speed so a vss sensor so that would also be a possibility then we have 13 analog inputs in comparison to only 11 so that's a little bit more uh, you have a digital barrel sensor well that's the same thing as before we have dual channel knock input, whereas the UAEFI only has one channel. Dual channel CAN bus, while the UAEFI can be expanded to two channels. This one has it standard. Dual onboard wideband controller. So you have two controllers that you can automatically use two LSU 4.9 sensors, which is also for a V engine very handy. And same thing here onboard map sensor possibilities. So for example, the MPX 46, uh, 6400 or the 4250. Although my suggestion would always be the 6400 because you have a lot of, uh, you have a lot more pressure range there. And you can also add Bluetooth. It is not standard. Why is Bluetooth, for example, not standard and a map sensor? Well, there are plenty of cars that have an external map sensor and the external map sensors are really not that expensive. The same thing goes for a Bluetooth module. Not that many people use a Bluetooth module. You can use CAN bus communication also for like a secondary display or a um, CAN check display or whatever. So you don't really need that necessarily if even if you are using a secondary display or secondary gauge to get all your uh, stuff shown on there. So that is a cost saving measure that has been taken and that is 
something to that they try to save money on for a reason to get the ecus even to that price level because it is very good value for money if you look at what you are getting if you compare that for example to an ecu master ecu you get only six sequential outputs uh, on ignition and um, injection and those are basically uh, from capability wise they are similar to a uaefi which costs 175 usd so a third of uh, the ECU or of an ecu master ecu the other thing is if you would look at for example a speedoino ecu well the thing i always complain about is they are a little bit slow the reason behind that is because the Arduino Mega 2560 that's on there is a 16 megahertz CPU or processor and that's really 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 not that much and also has only 256 kilobytes of flash and 8 kilobytes of RAM. Comparing that to the processors that's used in the RAS EFI ECU uh, that's about 10 times faster or 10 times as fast as a Speedoino is you and that's where a lot of the capabilities come from it can use a lot more sensors a lot more inputs and it can control a lot more stuff simultaneously whereas a Speedoino is you already has problems with closed loop idle control where it can't really no matter what PID settings you put in it can't really control idle that well and well with lambda or AFR it still it works kind of it's not perfect and there are a lot of issues uh, with the uh, processor speed and that's just um, you see it also while tuning there is you, you you will see that it is a little slow and slow to react and the tuning process itself is kind of imprecise in comparison to a rust efi for example you will have to do a lot more manual adjustments than with a Rust EFI when you do auto tuning, for example. So the speed alone is a huge benefit of these ECUs. And then again, the connectivity and the price. The price is about the same as the speed we know if you look at the universal models, but the connectivity is much better. On a speed we know ECU, you need the most expensive unit to get drive by wire working. And even then, you are at least twice as expensive as a Rust EFI. So price to performance is excellent and um, functionality beyond that, even if you go for the more expensive, expensive model um, on another level. That's it for my ECU buyer's guide for Rust EFI. I hope you could now understand what the um, differences are and what you actually should buy and what you maybe should avoid because it's just end of life like the Proteus and the Micro Rust EFI. And uh, if you have any questions about that, you will have or you will find any links in the description to the store of Rust EFI and also to Alpha X where you can find the plug and play units if you are interested in those. Otherwise, as always, I wish you a nice day and goodbye.